My name is Joe Harold. I work for Phelan Fobo and my job title is Youth Arts Coordinator. As part of our up and coming new programme at Cancel Hela, we are creating a platform for young people from different backgrounds as different sports, different different schools, that type of stuff to talk about issues that face them on a daily basis. We'll talk about positives, negatives, all that type of stuff and what their outlook on life is going to be. I'm excited to say that we have our first young person, Angelo. Um, Angelo, welcome. Thank you. Uh, you're privileged, I'm privileged, this is the first type of interview that I've done yeah, like this. Um, so do you want to tell the viewers who you are, where you're from and your age? Uh, I'm Angelo, I'm from I'm Angelo. I'm, I'm, I was born here in Ireland, but I'm from Philippines because my parents are both Filipino, and I'm 17 years old. Thank you. Um, so in terms, Angelo, of education, where, what school are you at at the minute, and I'm, also what area are you from? I'm a, I, I currently go to Rathmore Grammar School, and I'm from Bogas. Very good, very good. And what? In terms of subjects, what are you, what are you studying um, and what year are you in school? I'm doing four subjects at the moment. I'm doing religion, maths, history and art and I'm in lower six, so my first year of A-levels. Very good. What's your favourite and what's uh, your least favourite? Right now it's art and my least favourite has to be history because in terms of the course I don't really enjoy it that much. Right. Compared to GCSE. Don't be like me, I left school at 15. <laughs> um, so obviously we had a wee bit of a chat earlier on and stuff um, just off camera. So what type of stuff are you interested in? What type of stuff do you do outside of school um, in your local community? Uh, I do dance. I dance at a studio called Clark's Dance Studio. I dance hip hop and K-pop. And I also play drums. I do it in school and then I also practice outside of school. In school I do it more as like an exam. I do like grades, right. like music grades. Right now I'm doing grade five. So dance isn't really my sort of background. Yeah. I I'm sort of grew up with the GAA, Gaelic, Curtain, all that type of stuff. Um, what type of dance do you do? Uh, I do mainly hip hop and K-pop. So hip hop and K-pop. And K-pop, yeah. okay. And Talking to somebody who doesn't know what that is, what's the difference? Uh, hip hop is more like, it's more technique based and it's more like trained, like it's based on skills. Or K pop is like a music genre, but it's the performance that goes with it. It's like there's music artists, but they dance too. And like, I just sort of started learning those dances for fun, and that's what right. got me into proper dancing. Very good. Um, do you think you'd be able to teach me a couple of moves? <laughs> <laughs> <Not> <laughs> Uh, how did you how did you end up in da the dance that type of sort of activity? How did you end up in it? Uh, I never expected myself to go into dance because when I was younger, I used to play golf a lot. Right. Yeah, but then my sister went to Philippines and like K-pop, which is music genre, is really big there. Right. And then when she came back, she was obsessed with it, and then she got me into it. And then when I just started looking at it, I just, I started like getting a feel for the dances. And that got me into like dancing. Like I would find myself learning dances, and then I would find myself gravitating more towards dance, which led me to hip hop dancing. And I would watch competitions like of hip hop dancers, like from Philippines and like America. And like so, is it's big in the Philippines, is it? Yeah. 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 Very good. And what age is your sister? Uh, she's fourteen right now. Fourteen. So she's she's teaching you a wee bit of <laughs> yeah of how to do it. So if she teaches you, you can teach me. <laughs> Not yeah. today. Um, other than that, what what other you talked about? You you do a wee bit of drum work, do you as well? Yeah, I started drums in first year. Right, and your the community group stuff. So how have you ended up in Roden Street? Uh, my dad, he was very active here. He played basketball here. He like w done few work here. And then naturally me and my sister just came along with him and that's how we got involved. Very good. And even just listening to your father there before we come in, that you are involved in a wide range of, 
of stuff throughout the community. Your sister was saying that she is involved in a trad group in school. She plays the tin whistle. Um, you play the drums. Yeah. All being well when COVID is, is over and we have our carnival parade next year, you are going to produce your own group and you are going to take part in the carnival parade. Was that, was that what you were saying, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> um, tell me, growing up, 17 year old uh, young person, growing up in Belfast, what's it like? What's, what's the good points? What's the bad points? Are the good points? It was like that the community is so welcoming here that like I, I like as I was younger and growing up I didn't feel like I didn't feel like a whole new world if you get me yeah like I, I just felt naturally in with the community and like I understood and I learned some of the like terms used here and I didn't find it hard to like go along if you know what I mean yeah but like the bad points of it, like due to me being Asian, sometimes I can, sometimes going to town with my friends, even before, when there was news of COVID, we would get called slurs like Chinese, right. you caused the virus, go back to where you're from, stop eating babs, and that's the bad point. So, so that was sort of the, some of the stuff that was directed you in, in the early days of COVID. And how did you deal, how did you, so how did you feel and how did you deal with it? Uh, naturally, I felt hurt by it, but I just realized that they were just ignorant, and that's how they were. And to deal with it, we just, my mom always just told them to retaliate and just tell them more insults, but I just decided to just ignore it. Sometimes it takes a bigger person to, to, to yeah. walk away. Something else that struck me that when you were talking about it that, is that you had a numerous sort of friends groups, so you don't sort of pigeon your whole self end of okay I'm from the Philippines I'm gonna just stay with the demons and that type of stuff you have various mates from different backgrounds yeah yeah and tell us a wee bit about them I have like multiple friend groups some Filipino and then some from here but I it really doesn't matter to me where they're from because if I like them and if I get along well with them then I, I can be friends with them yeah um, and your dad was telling us you had got some awards when growing up around the Irish language and stuff. You had, yeah, yeah. You sort of lost a wee bit, have you? Yeah. Yeah, in P seven, I done like an Irish conversation contest, and on P six, and I won silver and gold medals. You had to go in, and then you had to speak Irish to like this examiner, and they would mark you. Very good. Very good. And you've tried a wee bit of GA, you tried a wee bit of Gaelic, and a wee bit yeah. of. Iron wasn't for you was it? No. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Um, how coming out of Covid, um, how optimistic would you be for young people? Do you know, what's, is the future looking bright for you? What's your plans? Are you, are you going to stay on school? Are you going to go straight on to university? Tell us a wee bit about what journey you can see yourself going on in the next sort of three, four years. Uh, in the upcoming future I would like to hopefully pass my A levels and get to uni. Uh, I really don't mind what uni, but I'm aiming for like London just to get right. a more wide range of experience, but I'm fine with Queens or like Ulster. Right, very and good. I hope to study architecture and law, but I haven't decided yet because it's kind of hard for young people to choose immediately what they want to do for the rest of their lives. So what do you want to be when you grow up, man? <laughs> Either a, lo yeah. a lawyer or an architect. An architect. And you're doing art of school at the moment? Well, you're doing art? Oh yeah. Yeah. And what type of stuff then, what type of projects are you working on? Uh, right now it's our experimental portfolio. So right now we just experiment with different medias. Right now I'm doing like collages and landscape painting. Yep. Very good. Um, and sort of moving on, if you could go, is it just London you would like to go to? I actually don't mind. I, I'm, I'm looking at universities from like Bath or like London or Manchester or even down south. We're looking yeah. at CEO right now and we're like looking at college universities like from down south and we're looking at how to apply to them as well. Right, very good. Um, and sort of moving forward, um, you were saying to me about that you might be interested in joining Fail as Youth subgroup, is that what I heard? <laughs> wasn't it? Wasn't it? <laughs> um, and what about? We, we talked earlier about, so you're from the Poglass, you're from yeah. Poglass area, Hazelwood? 
Yeah. And how do you how do you find that? How do you find living in the local community? How do you find the local people? And you're you're local yourself. Uh, I actually like the local people. I was friends with most of them in primary school, and most right. of them are really nice. And um, even the people there, I got to grow like I grew like I grew closer to our neighbors. Very and good. I find them really nice. Yeah. What primary school did you go to? Good Shepherd Primary School. So you went to Good Shepherd. Um, and your dad was saying too, he's involved in a lot of sort of community based stuff. Yeah. How did you, did you come along to the basketball in Roden Street, did you? Um, I came along, but I didn't play myself. You didn't play, no, no. So, moving forward, what's your, what's your positive message for young people? What does, what does the future look like coming out of lockdown? Uh, lockdown was a hard place for young people because they had to deal with online learning and then the stress of predicted grades and yeah. all I have to say is that we can't worry too much about our grades because they don't really define us. School doesn't define us in a way because all it teaches, it doesn't teach us everything. There's more to the world than just learning from a book. Teachers are going to love you. <laughs> I'm the same. I left school when I was 15. And I'm saying that I've, I've just recently finished university, so some t everyone takes a different route every now and again. Yeah. Mine's was a wee bit different from yours, yours will be different from others. Um, yeah. But you're planning to stay on school, go to university, and, uh, and all that type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So at the minute, Angela, we're doing a, a whole range of activities for for Christmas. So yeah. in st some of the stuff that I'm involved in is and again, a lot of it's online, but there is some physical stuff, obviously, um, in local communities. So, for example, I'm look at working alongside some of our local Share Start projects that are putting on virtual arts and crafts, virtual storytelling, and it's all around the theme of Christmas. Um, again, Christmas is one of my favorite times of the year. Um, and again, as part of this program, was about getting the perspective from somebody like yourself what so again we have this thing in the western world where we have this big build up to christmas and the month of december it's christmas parties and it's doing all that type of stuff um again a lot of stuff around visiting families and all all the good stuff um in terms of yourself how would you celebrate christmas uh christmas is really big celebrated in philippines and it naturally here too we have like one of the longest christmases we start counting down from september really and we would have our <laughs> christmas decorations up really early and then one of the traditions that from philippines that we brought here is called simbanga bay and it's like it's your mass but you go every week and oh no you go every day i mean every day yeah from uh, september to right no, to christmas december. right <laughs> but the only difference is we go from 4 a.m. to like 6 p.m. It's like 4 a.m. to 6 p.m. mass, and we just celebrate like the life of Jesus, and it's the build up to Christmas. And do you still do that even here when, in Belfast? Do you? Yeah, they do it in Ligonier Church. Right. And we would go there from 4 a.m. to 6 p.m. From 4 a.m. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Uh, <laughs> I don't like. I really don't like waking up early, but my friends were there, and after we just. After the actual mass, we would gather and we would just eat food and talk. So, so tell me this: back in the Philippines, you put your Christmas tree up in September. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Right. <laughs> really? Yeah. We have some people in Belfast who who like to put theirs up quite early. Maybe not just as early as September. And we've seen some people maybe forget to take theirs down and have it all, have it all year round. Um, look, thank you for coming and, and sharing your experience and it's it's really insightful for me um, and I hope maybe this is the start of a relationship between myself and yourself and you would become more involved yeah. with feeling and stuff. Um, the likes of this program we have plans for the new year um, and your expertise in IT and technology could, <laughs> could probably come into play um, and I suppose we would like to thank Obviously, Children in Need, who I'm funded by, who support the program, but also Roden Street for inviting us along and letting us, us house our first 
and can't lick your